Hey, a pleasant good day, Royals fans. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Boric. As round two is here, as we're here to preview round two against the Newfoundland Growlers, who had to do the traveling to start the series since they won game seven up in St. John's, Newfoundland over the Trois Rivière Lions, and now had to travel down here to Reading as the Royals got to wait for them after winning game six this past week, of course, against the Maine Mariners. So, coming into this series, I think a big thing Kirk McDonald stressed for those that were able to watch, if not, you can go on YouTube and still watch the pre-series press conference, that he stressed how big having two starting level goaltenders were in this game. I think <clears throat> the Royals definitely win the boat on that side because they got Logan Flodell, who played a big sample size of games this year and was very successful in the ECHL after his uh, standout seasons at Acadia University. Where obviously Newfoundland has a very good starter in Keith Petrozelli and a potentially very good future starter in their backup, Ryland Parento or Parenteo. Uh, sorry for his, I think it's Parento. But either way, he was a standout at New Brunswick and actually ended up being an assistant captain in his final season. So you obviously know he's a great guy as a young guy to have in the locker room and played two very good games in the ECHL to start his career at Sas Saskatoon, Canada. But he's obviously not proven in the league yet. He only got two games in where Logan Flodell has a bigger sample size. So I would say when it comes to the goaltender endurance battle, Petrozelli played all seven in the first round. It's going to be tough with this condensed series to push your goalie for all seven. It's going to come down to what Parent per Ryland Parento is able to do uh, for Newfoundland because obviously the Reading Royals have Pat Nagel in cage, one of the best of all time and one of the best of all time in ECHL playoff standards as well. And then they have Logan Flodell who, yes, hasn't controlled his rebounds to the greatest degree in the postseason but still has been able to play very solid and keep the Royals in game. And obviously you can't expect everything out of a guy who's played only 19 to going on 20 would it be his next game next season as obviously we hope he's still around with the Royals regular season games so you can't expect him to be perfect but he was been very good for the Reading Royals in the postseason thus far that's for damn sure and whatever games he gets I would be very confident in him as a netminder where Parento I would not be not confident in him as a uh, Growlers fans that's not what I'm saying at all it's more for the Growlers side of things he just doesn't even have a 10 to the 15 game sample size yet he only has two so that's that's literally the, the, the only difference um and then when it comes to our defense obviously health is going to be key um hopefully both Garrett Cockerell and Patrick McNally who of course got dinged up in the first series are going to be back and ready to skate in this game McFadden has been very good since his return has been a plus three since his return from the Lehigh Valley Phantoms Cormier was very good in the first round as well, um, and then Mike Shen was very good in his three games, but that's kind of basically the essence of Mike Shen. Whenever he has to come in, he always does really well for the Reading Royals, but obviously the man on the mission in the first round and the MVP was Frank the Tank Tachara. Then you had Pritchard, who was great in the first round, coming back off of his end of the regular season injury. Gooch continued his success. Bykoff continued his success. Hausinger was very good. So all the youngsters plus the veterans of Lowe, Gooch, and Achara, plus also Tomas Evans playing that great defensive role. Um, did, has a, the only reason he had the bad minus rating was because of the really bad one game up in Maine uh, that really affected him there, so I wouldn't overlook at that one. And then obviously Sonia brings the punch, but we would like to see him on the ice a little bit more too to make those silky passes to Tomas Ebbing for that winning goal like in the first round against Maine and not going over the top. So it's all about balancing that punch. But I do think the Newfoundland Growlers versus Reading Royals is a hell of a matchup because these are two very good puck possession teams. Both play very good at their best in the neutral zone as well and try to limit the team from getting past the neutral zone to the blue line into the offensive attack zone. So it's going to be interesting to see then which one of these teams is able to enter the attacking zone better and possess the puck in the attacking zone since obviously both teams, I would maybe give the Growlers the edge of this since this is really the bread and butter of their offense in one degree, like the top three kind of degrees of their offense to be the bread and butter would be their um, transition game. But the Royals are obviously very good in that as well, and they're a great puck possession team, just like the Reading Royals and Newfoundland Growlers. So I feel like the matchup of these teams are very similar. They're also pretty disciplined, not as disciplined as the Reading Royals, but they have Zach O'Brien, who is the most disciplined player in all of ECHL hockey this season, 
And in the first round, I remember Chris saying, the announcer for Newfoundland, uh, when I was watching one of those first round games, he probably had to find his way to the penalty box or something like that because he never really gets penalties. Gordy Green is one of those guys that has very good offensive ability, but similar to uh, Sonia, but obviously is bigger than Sonia. He brings the punch. Um, actually, no, he's not actually. Gordy Green's about the same size as Sonia. He's like 5'8", so I thought Sonia sometimes is listed a little bit shorter than that, so they are about the same size. Darian Plouffe, of course, is a player that brings the offense and is able to bring the punch a little bit at his size and is also a very good defensive player for the Growers as well. So this team, that's kind of why this team matches up well. You have a low and at the chart, very good on the defensive side, but also bring the offensive punch. Well, Darian Plouffe would be a guy that compares to that, even as a youngster um, in the league. And Isaac Johnson would be a guy that compares to that, that plays very good on both ends of the puck and is a bigger guy at 6'3". So <clears throat> I think these teams both really mesh well together. That's why this series definitely is going to have the potential to go to the mega Paramount game of seven, but I think it's going to be huge for the Royals to set the tempo in game one. You can't let them steal the home ice advantage. You got that for a reason. The Growers, as I said at the beginning, had to travel in this series to get here after coming through Toronto and then coming down here. The Royals only have to deal with that going up after game two, so obviously it would be great to take the first two, but I'm not going to think in, <clears throat> in over-optimistic ways because this is a great team that we battled down basically to the final week with to take the division so I do think this matchup is literally basically and I think Kermit Don if I remember he described it as it's kind of like a coin flip matchup so I would say that makes it even more paramount to take advantage come out strong in game one and take advantage also even though the penalty kill was very good at home in the first round series you don't want to put the growlers on the penalty or on the power play was Tyler Bowl in the St. John's native who's come in in the re end of the regular season and during the regular season played amazing in I believe it was like about 20 games. Yeah, he played amazing in 19 games and then in the Kelly Cup playoffs is well above a points per game pace. And uh, it's cool to see a guy from their native land do great for their team. Obviously, the Royals are going to want to be able to limit him and Zach O'Brien and Santonzo, Green, Ploof and others in this series. I would say he and O'Brien are the biggest... Uh, guys, you got a limit there, but also obviously Finkelstein from the back end has been very good for them as well. Hoffenmeyer, Kapchek has been very good in the first round. Uh, Pete Tronero is obviously a guy that's just very good in the defensive end and can make the passes up the ice as well and can step up when needed for his teammates. So that's why I feel like our teams mix and match very well. So it's going to be key to be able to at least be one and one going into Newfoundland. It would be fantastic to be 2-0 and going into Newfoundland. But, you know, I'm not trying to over-optimistically think here just because I think these teams are so tight and match up so well where I feel like this is the better matchup because there's the mix of grit and grind and the mix of very good uh, possession skill players on both of these teams where if it was Trois Rivières they play that 80s pound style hockey and that's why I think it took a minute for Newfoundland to get through that first round from watching that series in my opinion and it would have also took our Royals a minute to get past them so just because of that reasoning as well so they wouldn't have matched up as well I think these two teams match up perfectly that's why this series is such a tough one to pick but I would say the Royals have a very good chance and the best chance of winning if they're able to capitalize in game one and take that home ice advantage because that gives you a much more percentage chance if you look throughout history to be able to take the second game and if you're up 2-0 going in the Newfoundland then even if it plays out the same way as against Maine well then you're still up 3-2 coming back in to be able to seal it so that's kind of the way I look at that that's the best way and the best foot forward peace out everybody stay safe please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June the series starts tonight at 7.30, that's key, a little bit later start time, 7.30 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe.